I'm powering along using only the magnificent engine of the human body. Well, fairly magnificent anyway. The question is, just how fast can I go? Over the last few weeks, thousands of you have written into the website asking scientific questions and suggesting experiments to help us to answer them. Today the question is, how fast can I propel myself under my own steam? Well, I brought the shack here to Rockingham Motor Speedway, and our challenge is to use technology to convert every scrap of my energy into sheer speed. If you were building a racing car, the first thing you do is get a better engine. But we're stuck with this one, and it isn't going to break any records. So the Science Shack team, Jem, Chris, Lou and Jonathan, are going to use technology to take what little power I do have, and I've got to store it somehow. And you have sent in dozens of suggestions as to how to store that energy. Some, I have to say, more sensible than others. Now, one of the most sensible came from Nick Yeaton, and he suggested we should store energy in a weight which we then allow to fall. So, here we have a weight, a baked bean tin, and it's held on this string which goes over a pulley there. So when that falls, it'll pull the string, and that will pull all the way along here and pull this chap, who is poised, ready to leap into action. So we'll just pull him back, winch up the weight. The idea is that I either winch the huge weight up or pedal slowly backwards. Then, as the weight drops, it releases my energy really quickly. One, two, three, go! Wow! Look at that! He must have done at least 10 miles an hour. Absolutely zoomed away, so that's obviously one good way of storing energy. Now, there is a very slight disadvantage. You really want a self-contained system. And so we built one. Have a look at this. This chap, you see, is completely self-contained. He's got his tyre on the cart and the baked beans there. And he's all ready to go. All I need to do is to have chocks away. One, two, three, go. It's not quite as fast, is it? Oh, it's not bad. Hey, not bad at all. So now I could be in there, I could pedal away, winch up the baked bean tin and go again. Mind you, it might be easier without the baked beans. Now, Frank Maynard is suggested we should use big springs. So I've got a couple of springs here, in fact, a couple of mouse traps because they're pretty vicious. And there are two garden canes, and they go over to a bit of string which winds the back axle. So in principle, these springs should wind this chap forward. Let's just see. Put him down. One, two, three, go! Yeah, look at that! The mouse trap powered vehicle! Right, zooms along, fantastic speed, and then here you pedal again to winch back your springs and go once more. Fantastically simple and actually very clever. Thank you, Frank. Neat idea. A spring is a perfectly good way of storing energy, but at full size, the engineering needed to contain the coiled spring safely would be fearsome. Another really simple way of storing the energy is with a rubber band, like this one here. Attached to this cart, all I need to do is to pull it back Oh, chap's fallen out. Put him in when we get back to the starting line. Now, nah. sit still, hold tight. One, two, three, go! Whoa! That's terrific. He's gone probably as far as any of them. Now, we did seriously consider this for my bike. We thought we could have great big bungees, attach them to either side of the track, I could winch them back, and then when I'm ready, release myself. But the trouble is, there's so much energy stored, it really might have been a little bit dangerous. But some of your ideas seem just about safe enough to try, including storing energy flywheels. And a whole lot of you have suggested that, including Mike Perrin, Josh Phillips, Graham Vargas and Rob Anderson. Now, Chris has been fixing flywheels onto my bike. The flywheels are driven from the rear tyre by a tiny wheel. So, Chris puts all his energy into getting the flywheel spinning fast. Then, when he's ready to go, the flywheel is lifted by a cunning mechanism controlled by the brake lever. 
and now release your flywheels or you're going to die. <laughs> Can you feel anything? Not really, no. Ah, so is it still, maybe you're not getting enough grip between the... We're not actually getting any useful power from the flywheel yet, but you can see how it might work. We're going to try another system as well, which also uses bike technology. This time, it's the bike pump. You can see the effort I'm putting into compressing the air, and the storage system is wonderfully simple, a pop bottle. So, imagine this is me. I've been pumping up my tank for half an hour, and now I'm ready for the off. There we go. Look at that. Terrific. Well, power isn't a problem on this scale. I just hope the full-size version is a bit more stable. So, while the team perfect the flywheel bike and investigate full-size pop bottle rockets to store my energy, I'm going back to look at the bike itself. Could you make a faster bike? Well, there's only one way to find out. I brought my bike to Manchester University's School of Engineering, and all I need now is wind! Can I have some wind, please? I'm investigating my maximum speed. Why is there a point when I just can't go any quicker? Now, I know from experience that the fastest I can ride this bike on level ground is about 20 miles an hour. Pushed forward by the great force from my muscles, the bike would keep on accelerating. But the wind resistance is holding me back. And when it pushes as hard as I do, I can go no faster. I push with about 16 to 20 newtons. We've now got a 20 mile an hour wind, and the force on me which they measured is 16 newtons. So wind resistance at 20 miles an hour is equal to my forward push, which explains why that is my maximum speed. Now let's see what happens when we take the speed up. I've invited along bike designer Mike Burrows, famous for the bike on which Chris Boardman won Olympic gold in 1992. You design these peculiar bikes. What are you trying to do? Well, I'm trying to go fast, the same as you are, Adam. Yeah. Uh, and I'm trying to do it by reducing my air resistance. We've seen in the wind tunnel how, how much of a problem it is getting through air. And there are two ways to solve the problem, other than simply pedalling harder. One is to make the object as small as possible, and we've got a, a much better riding position here, so your body is lowered down so there's less of it breaking Right. Through, through the wind tunnel. And the other is to change the shape. The Olympic style bike is made entirely of aerofoil shapes. In the tunnel, it has a bit less air resistance than the mountain bike. But having me sitting on it rather than a wiry athlete doesn't help the figures. This is more like it. This mean machine has an aerodynamic front, but it also has me almost lying down, showing a much smaller shape to the wind. The effect is dramatic. If I pedal exactly as hard as on my mountain bike, my new maximum speed is, theoretically at least, 30 miles an hour. Using the same engine, I've gained 50% more speed just by cutting down my wind resistance. At least, that's the theory, but can I really beat the mountain bike? Right, just over 24 miles an hour. So it's significantly faster than the mountain bike. I need a bit more practice in this beautiful machine. Maybe I'd go a little bit quicker. Still, 24 miles an hour, not bad. But this is the ultimate, in Britain at least, the best you can do with aerodynamics and sheer muscle power. Blue Yonder, the beautiful bike built for Olympic gold medalist Jason Queeley to ride in this year's World Human Power Speed Challenge in Nevada. It's an amazing beast, designed by Chris Field. 
So the shape is a, as close as we can get to profile around the rider's shape. And in the case of this particular vehicle, Jason, the Olympic champion, Jason Queeley, yes. is a relatively big guy. So, so you put him in there and just mould it around? Him, well, it? pretty much so, yes. The visuals of seeing a, a vehicle like this come past you, even 65 miles an hour, standing by the side of the road when a silent vehicle goes past, just with a slight wind hissing noise, it's just mind-blowing, really. It's just amazing. It's not fun, I don't think, for the guys in it, um, but it's relatively short, the sort of amount of time they're in there, sort of six or seven minutes maximum. So it's a pretty amazing record. Yes. It's one that we you know, really want to get. Now, next year, you're going to win. Is that right? That's the intention, yes. Yeah, so are you going to take this machine back? No. Modify it? No, we're going to clean sheet of paper, start again. Start all over again? Yes. Wow, so you've got ideas buzzing around, have you? Yeah, I've already started on the new design. Jason in Blue Yonder managed only three runs with a maximum speed of 65 miles an hour. That's a whole lot faster than me, but still nowhere near Sam Whittingham's extraordinary record of just over 80 miles an hour in Varna Diablo. I'm never going to have that sort of athletic ability, nor, sadly, the beautiful aerodynamic body. So I have to pin my hopes on storing my energy. Right, so we're ready to go. Yeah, I think so. What have we done about the slipping drive wheel? We've glued on a section of inner tube round it to increase the coefficient of friction between that and the bike tyre. And we've also let some air out of the bike tyre to increase the surface area, the contact oh, I area. See. So this is just old inner tube? Yeah, that's all it oh, is. Oh, fantastic. So hopefully that should stop the slipping to some extent. It looks good now. Yeah. yeah. You're obviously getting good contact. And otherwise you think it's all right? We think well, so. It's all right as a flywheel bike's <laughs> going to be. OK, so you're going to pedal up to speed. Jem's going to tip you off, yep. you're going to bike down the track, yep. and after a bit you're going to let the flywheel kick on. Kick the flywheel in and see what it does. OK, so are you all right without me now? Because if so, uh, yeah, I'll get into the yep. pursuit vehicle. Me and Jem can set this going. Good luck. All right. OK, Jem. So you're off the ground. I'm releasing it. Whoa. There are clearly some stability problems. I'm glad it's Chris on the bike, but then he did build it. Oh, OK. OK. How fast is okay, that? OK, that's four. Just trying to slow it down. That's four. I'm going to release it now. Right. Whoa! Hey! Whoa! Colossal! That's five, six! 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 Six, six and a half, five and a half. You put on 50% more speed. I'm down speed. to five again. Ah. But that was a noticeable increase. Right. So for t nearly 10 yards, yeah. you went 50% faster with That's a flywheel. Right. Yeah. That's fantastic. That was quite good. Probably the greatest increase ever by a flywheel <laughs> fly on a bike. With a flywheel bike. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> on the other hand, the chances of spinning it up to 40 miles an hour are small. OK, so our flywheel isn't a serious contender. But flywheels are actually used in some buses and trams but they go at 10,000 revolutions a minute and the flywheel has to be kept in a vacuum. Not really possible on the bike. So, back to the pop bottle rocket. And this is it. This is our vehicle for ultimate speed. It may look just a little clumsy at the moment, but the Shat team have a cunning plan. And what they're going to do is to take off this heavy box and the mud guards here and the electrics and strip it right down to reduce the weight. Put a platform on the back and then rocket propel it. You remember those pop bottle rockets? Well, we're going to do exactly the same thing, but by using these things, this is our pop bottle. It's a six inch sewer pipe and we're going to half fill that with water and then pump up the rest with air to about 10 bar, 10 times normal atmospheric pressure, so that when I release the valve, water will come squirting out the back with enormous velocity. Now it's time for the Great Science Shack Pop Bottle Rocket Competition, as defined on the website. What these rockets have to do is zoom along a 20 metre track, OK? They're allowed to be any design, but it's a 20 metre track, a two-litre pop bottle, 70 pounds per square inch, 70 psi. OK, those are the only rules. And we've got a great mass of competitors here, and the first one is Zach. Is that right? 
Now, your wonderful machine here is called Squeaky. Where did you get the wheels from? Um, I think it was B&Q. B&Q. Terrific. Are you ready to go? OK. Three, two, one, go! Ah! <laughs> hey! <laughs> hey! Wow! Fantastic speed. Unfortunately, it didn't make the 20 metres. Now, our next competitor is Sam. It is Sam, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Now, what's your beast called? Flower Power. Well, I do think it's a very elegant, beautiful design, and I'm very fond of all these flowers. I would have thought they'll help a great deal. Mm -hmm. And it's certainly very green and environmentally friendly. <laughs> anyway, are you all ready to go? All right. Three, two, one, go! <laughs> you can't turn it. Do you want a hand? All right. Hey! Ah! Ah! Now our next competitor is Nick. Nick, this looks an absolutely fabulous machine. I love the CD wheels. Does it make a play tunes as it goes along? No. No. So why have you used CDs? Um, they got very little friction and very little air resistance, and they're light. Well, those sound very good reasons to me. What about the bearings? Uh, those are off an old skateboard. And oh, that's terrific. They should be very, very free then. Yeah. Right. Does it, does it have directional stability or does it wobble a bit? It wobbles a bit. It tends to go around in circles. Uh, in circles. Ah, so straight 20 metre course, perhaps not the best. OK. Ready to go? OK. Three, two, one, go! Way! Hey, ah! <laughs> well, it certainly went round in circles. You were absolutely right. And it did go with enormous speed. Unfortunately, it seems to slide a bit, doesn't it? Your wheels aren't gripping. Maybe we need a slightly softer surface. Yeah. If we could melt the tarmac, it'd be great. Anyway, it went, it went an absolute bomb, didn't it? I'm, I'm very sorry it doesn't quite qual qualify, but well done. Brilliant. Now, our next competitor is Nick. So you've got compressed air coming through here. Yeah. Right. And it goes in up this long tube. Right. But why have you got this great long tube? So you don't get really wet. Ah, so you can be a long way away. Yeah. So you reckon this is, you know, certain to do the course? No. <laughs> have you tested it over 20 metres? Yes. Yeah. And how does it go? Quite. <laughs> 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 I well, got soaked. Uh, you are very wet. Yes. Oh dear. Let me take some of that water off. Ah. Well, it went off like a rocket. Yes. Terrific. I think I might have done the 20 metres. Unfortunately, the producer was standing in the way. Three, two, one, go! Ah! Ah! <laughs> hey! you, you did know we were meant to go 20 metres. I did. Yeah, well, unfortunate. Very close, though. Hopefully one of the kids will do it. Go! Yeah! Oh! Go! Yes! Yeah! Oh! It's quite tense, this. Could go off at any moment. This is Explosion, the second run. Ah, it's off! Hey! Hey, go on, go on, go on! Wow! Well, it did veer off, but you got to the finishing line there. In fact, they stopped it behind the line. I declare Nick the winner. Well done, with explosion. You're very wet again, aren't you? Yeah. You do seem to have a tendency to stand behind this thing when it goes off. Anyway, brilliant, brilliant engineering, great work. Thanks very much indeed for coming along. Inspired by the race, the team slaved away for hours to get my rocket bike built. The tubes were in place, they were working on the valves, and then this happened. Now we've got some really bad news. We bought these pipes in good faith. We said what they were for and they said, yeah, they'll be terrific. And so we have set them all up and we're halfway through mounting them. And we've suddenly got this fax from the manufacturers who say it's not safe after all. They're fine with liquids in, but if we put gas in at high pressure, unless it's absolutely guaranteed oil free, there's a danger of brittle fracture, which means they'd explode, I guess, and put shards of PVC all over the countryside, mostly yeah. into the back of my head. How could they possibly go? This is thick, this stuff. We don't 
actually know the mechanism of fracture. I think it's possibly there's a worry that if there is any imperfection in the tube, if it's filled with a compressed gas, when it goes, the gas, gas is going to expand, it's going to take the tube with it. And they don't want to kill us. Well, I, no. I don't terribly want to kill us to kill me either, if that's OK. They don't so, want you to go. OK, what's the solution? Have you got a solution? Offhand, we haven't got a solution. And you've got 18 hours. We've either, yeah, we've either got to look for a more reliable plastic or go for something known technology, and that's steel. OK, well, all I'd say is good luck and let's get the damn thing working. OK, no worries. Pretty bad news. But by the next morning, there was a, a sort of answer. Now, the team have found a solution. And this is it. This is my new pot bottle. And it's fantastically light. Ah, I can nearly lift it. I can't believe I'm going to pedal that very fast. But they say they can pump this up to 10 bar with no trouble at all. The first, first of all, we need to test it though. Right, you can see the huge the effort Jem is using to pump up the tank. If we can get that energy back, perhaps there's a chance it'll work. It is just dripping from here. You can see that it's just and dripping. There's a sort of fairly worn old fitting on that, so. Right. We but can it's handle not, that level of But it's not a lot. All right. Are you prepared to do it? Yeah, OK. Let's go. go on then. Good luck. I wouldn't stand right over it if I were you. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Terrific. Well, that was rather impressive. I have to say, there's a good gut. It's still sort of blurping out now. Yes, excellent. Well, I think there is a sporting chance that might push me a little bit down the road. Time for the stability test. We have to be certain that 60 kilograms of tank with 70 kilograms of water sloshing about won't make the bike tip over or be impossible to steer. Unfortunately for me, it passes with flying colours, so I'll be on it next. Fantastic. What speed was that? About 45. About 45. Yeah. It felt, it, going into the first corner was really quite hairy because it, it is quite twitchy, but once we got around that, the corners look really scary, really scary as, we, as you approach, but... It's fine. It feels absolutely stable. Doesn't feel any heavier. It's brilliant. It doesn't. Yeah. There's nothing sloshing around. There's nothing going on there at all. It's great. Great. Good to go. Right. That's cool. That's good. Cause that was just what was in there. We're almost ready to go, but time is running right, out, and we'll only get one or at most two runs. Jonathan is bothered about when I fire the rocket. We have to reach maximum speed exactly as I hit the timing gate. So I'm just, I'm just checking to see what we'd expect the the distance of to be and. Uh, the speed to attain with 20 litres of water in it. And then with 40 and then with 60, so we can set the rocket stage to the right, we can set the rocket ignition point in the right place. Whether the simulation's right or not is another matter. We should get Adam up to some speed with this. Of course, I'd love to have pumped up the bike myself, but once I got my leathers on, I found I could hardly move. Even so, you can see I'll be using sheer human power. The chaps have pumped for all they're worth, so they've certainly put some work in. The only trouble is I'm in all these leathers and I'm so stiff I can hardly move and I'm not sure how fast I can pedal. We'll have to see what we can do. First run. I must admit, I'm as worried about heaving the great weight as I am about having a rocket inches from my backside. OK, I'm in top gear now, getting ready to go for the toggle. Ready, release! Oh, I can feel it! Terrific, it's like going downhill. That's very comfortable. That's wonderful. Yeah! Wow! Absolutely wonderful. 18.49 miles an hour. But I was doing only about eight when I pulled the handle, and I know I was still speeding up when I crossed the line. That was terrific. It felt really, really nice. 
very hard work pedalling it up because it's extremely heavy and these trousers are incredibly thick and sort of impede movement. So it was very hard work. I reckon I was probably doing only about 10 miles an hour when I switched it on. But then it was just like, well, it was like accelerating in a car. If you're, say, in second gear and you put your foot down, you pull away smoothly. And it was just like that, very comfortable, steady in the small of the back, rock solid. I never felt like wobbling either way. It was really good. Looked like going down a steep hill, but it was actually a better feeling than that. So that was great. What I need is to be able to get up more speed before I switch on the jet. Second run. We've pumped up to 10 bar from eight, but it's now so dark, I'll have to steer by the headlights of the following car. We've also moved the burn point 17 metres further back. Right, I'm pedalling as hard as I can, ready to pull the toggle, pulling now! There we go, wow, terrific! Yeah! I can't keep up pedaling now, I've got to go on freewheel. Wow, that was terrific. That was great. That was really nice. Ah. Well, it was a wonderful kick. It's a great kick. The only problem is now that this thing isn't really built for speed and I simply couldn't keep up pedalling once the jet was going. So that I couldn't add anything to it. I was running only on jet for the last 30 yards or so. I reckon we might have got to 25, but we won't have got any more. If I could pedal this faster, it would be great. Final speed, 18.64 miles an hour. Rather disappointing. But this time we hit the rocket too early and I was slowing down before I crossed the line. My onboard speedo gave a maximum speed of 20 miles an hour. But still, I more than doubled my speed. With a bit of development, lots of weight reduction and a top athlete, I really think this technology could challenge the human-powered speed record. If you've got science questions you'd like answered now, look at the Science Shack website, where a team of Open University scientists is standing by. It's on bbc.co.uk slash science slash science shack.